Well, this is the Quincy Fire Department, a look back. We'll be looking at a collection of photographs, and joining me is Fire Chief Thomas Gorman, retired. Welcome, Tom. Welcome well, back. Glad to be here. Great to go over these uh, fascinating photos that go back quite a few years. Uh, before we get to the actual photos, I do want uh, folks to just, uh, if they don't know your service with the Fire Department, how many years and how far back does it go? I was 40 years. My father was 42. So my father went on in 19, uh, 1925 and retired in 1967. And I retired. I went on in 63 and retired in, uh, in uh, 02. So some of these photographs that we will see are before your time. Yes. We have some folks here. Yeah, that's Captain Kane, Captain McNeese, Bill Novelli. That's Bill Legan again. He, he could transfer it to, to uh, Engine 2. And folks are going to notice uh, in some of these photographs how the gear has, has changed. A lot of these, you know, they had their globe coats and their rubber boots. I mean, one thing Quincy was, it, it, it was pretty well. Uh, man with uh, good equipment, you know, uh, uh, coats and and uh, rubber boots and helmets. Through the years, they were always well equipped. Well equipped, but many times the, these people would fight a fire in 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 in, in the clothes just like this. They wouldn't put their their boots on, or, you know, if the weather was good, you know. Which of course is not done today. No. Today, one good thing about today is they have good good equipment, and they're and they're impressed to to wear it. So this photograph was taken around what year and at what uh, station? That was at uh, Engine Two, uh, North Quincy, across from the high school. And this, uh, this was around 1936. This is Engine Two. Is, a 1925 Seagrave. They bought three of them. They bought one for headquarters, one for engine two, and one for engine four. And they bought uh, three ladder trucks. They were city service type ladder trucks. These were bought by, uh, were made by the Seagrave Corporation of Columbus, Ohio, which was one of the leading manufacturers of fire apparatus. Um, it was a 750 uh, centrifugal pump. As far as placement, uh it looks like emeralds. Is that a sign in the background? Yeah, the, 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 that would be uh, right where uh, there's a brick building there next to Engine 2. McDonald's is there, where okay. McDonald's is, in the, in, the, in the red line. This is the West Quincy Station. That's uh, up to around 1925. Everything, was, everything that was built was built on the automobiles. Big old Packards and some white trucks and Studebakers and stuff like that. They, they really didn't have a, a, a good standard truck for that was built for f fighting fires. And consequently, I think this truck only had a four-cylinder engine in it. Right, right at the uh, the end of the 30s is when they bought three Maxim. Pumpers, 750s. One went to West Quincy, one went to Houseneck, and the other one went to um, Engine 7 in Squanum. But are you saying basically that um, they simply didn't build apparatus anywhere at that point that was superior to what Quincy had had? Most of them were built on commercial commercial chassis. Okay. A Farrah Company out in uh, Hoppington was one of the big uh, commercial, used a lot of commercial equipment. Okay, we have two gentlemen. Uh, that's my father, and that's uh, Joe McGuire. This is the deputy's car. Okay, and your father is? He's a captain at that time. He's a captain. And the year that this photograph would have been taken? Well, I'd say it was uh, in the late 30s, well, 1938. Okay. And your dad is sitting, is driving the car? No. My oh, I'm sorry. Your father is 
forward. He's yeah. the first we. Oh, right. He was the he was the acting deputy. This is the traditional Memorial Sunday. Um, the Relief Association members would place the wreath on on the uh, statue down, which is now being revamped. That's right. Uh, which is a wonderful thing. And the people in this picture is Captain Jolly, uh, Joel Malvesti, Sam James, and uh, Bill Barron. And the year around for this uh, photo? I would say this is around 1948. And there's actually a couple of photos that I believe are associated with this particular day. Yeah, this is, they're formed up. There's Deputy Maloney. He was big in the credit union and forming the credit union, municipal credit union. Now this was Memorial Day? Yes. So this would be the Memorial Day parade back parade, then? Yeah, that was a big deal for us kids when we were small. You'd go get it some tonic and ice cream and Lana Dune cookies. Now we see that there's a shoe service. Yeah, this is, uh, this, is Han this is coming down Hancock Court. Okay. That's engine four with ladder two and engine engine four. That station today you drive down is it looks the same. I was going to say I, yeah. it looks familiar. The only thing now it's it's gone off is it's got, it's got uh, telephone uh, towers off it. Okay, okay. And which which I guess leads me to the importance of if you're going to hold on to a, a building for a long time, certainly it needs to be repaired on a regular yeah. basis. Oh, yes. Yeah, I mean, they, they've done this station over. The, uh, the men should be credited because they did a lot of work on it themselves. I mean, some of the work that they did was, was major work and uh, to make it livable, you know. Uh, there was a lot of, there's been a lot of talk about moving the station. Again, you, you come, where do, where do you put it, you know? This is engine six before it was demoed. So and that would place this at around what time? That was around 1915, right around in that area between 1915 and 1920. And it was demolished when? It was demolished in 1946. Okay. And what they did, they took that station and moved it over. Just a slight move? Just a slight move. This is the back end of the engine, engine six. In winter. In the winter time. Talk about the, the difficulty of fighting a fire in the winter. Well, it's, it's, you have falls, people, uh, you have chances of, of having indoor fires because people are inside the house. Um, they have, you know, your heating equipment. Although the heating equipment is, and that have, have advanced tremendously today, so you don't have the fires like you used to have. Well, this was engine six. Uh, looked in pretty good shape there. But uh, the up above there, that rotunda, that's where the captain's quarters was. Okay. Now this is engine six before they moved the building. That's the ladder, that's ladder four. And the repair shop took the ladder four and, 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 and uh, rebuilt it. Right yeah. within, now where was the repair shop? The repair shop was downstairs in fire headquarters. It's now at the shipyard. So the practice has continued, but the location obviously yeah. changed. Yeah, we, fortunately they have, they have two excellent mechanics, and they've always had good mechanics, uh, fortunately. Uh, they do. They do a lot of work in house. How about good cooks? You have good cooks. Oh, they're wonderful cooks. This is engine sixes. There's Roy, uh, deputy chief. Uh, excuse me, Lieutenant Roy Hayford, Eddie uh, Walters, Tommy O'Connor, and Joe Dewey. You notice in the background, of course, the station and how it's framed in wood. Yeah. So this would date back to. This is this is around this is around 1946. Okay, that's a 1936 uh, uh, Maxim pumper, which Maxim built a good truck. 
Uh, they, they, this truck stayed in service until 1961. Did it? Yeah. So you could, you could see that it was well built. I was gonna, that was a, that's a good length of service. Yes. This again is the, the trucks just before they were getting ready to, to move the uh, building. The trolley car used to come up and make the bend right in front of the station. Oh, really? Came up Manhattan Avenue. Okay. Uh, this is the house next door. In fact, uh, if you go down here, the, the, that garage is still there. Really? Yeah, that's John McDermott, John Menz, Larry Hanrahan, and Ed Egan. The Menz family, they have a length of service with that's right. the fire department. John came on, uh, who became the deputy chief, and then his boy, John Jr., he became a lieutenant, and then his boy, uh, George, was a firefighter. This is the, the, the station out front. The big tall fellow there, he, that's Deputy, uh, that's uh, Deputy Hooley's driver, Jimmy Gallagher. Would and that be the chief's car in the that, middle? That's, that's the deputy's car. They the bought deputy's the, car. They bought that. That's a 1946 Chrysler. Yeah, this, this is the same group, Pat Sullivan. Yeah, just a um, same group, different angle, angle I believe. That's all, yeah. Deputy Hooley would get very, very perturbed when they used to call him and uh, Mutt and Jeff. Jimmy Gallagher was tall, and of course the deputy was shot. <laughs> he was not too happy. Firehouse humor, I suppose. Yes, yes. <laughs> this is Pat Sullivan and Tommy O'Connor. That's uh, Hayford, Lieutenant Hayford, Tommy O'Connor, um, Ralph Gibbons, and uh, Joe Dewey. That's Tommy O'Connor again with an uh, engine six. Now this is just before they started to move it. Demolition day was coming quickly. I think you can see breaks in the glass, it yeah. seems, in the windows. No, that's looking down at, at the, that was where the new station is, you know, the blank lot there. Right, right. That was going to be, I'm sorry, the lot was going to be? That's where the building was built, right, right, see where the flagpole is? Right. That's, that's where they were building the new building. That's where they're going to build the new building. Okay. This is the this, this steamer that Four River built and gave it to the city. And, Built right at the Four River Shipyard? Yeah. And uh, they used to call it Big Bertha. It, uh, now, you called it a steamer. Talk about well, it, the it, steamer. It, the steamer is the, you, you'd make a fire, and the water would be in the, you, 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 the, water would be in the, in the, in the boiler, and it would make steam. What they'd do is they'd, they'd start the fire as they left the station. Well, they, they used to, some of them, they kept them on, on uh, steam uh, from the house boiler. So it's a steam-powered vehicle? Right. This, 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 this was a steam-powered steam, steam -powered vehicle. Look at the spokes on yeah. the wheels. Amazing. Oh, I tired. my father would tell me about the story about how hard it was to drive. I mean, it was a, it was a brute of a, <laughs> of a vehicle, but it could pump. It could pump. And what year? This was around 1919. All right. It looks like uh, they're, not, they're not rescuing a cat from a no, tree. This is the back of headquarters in 1946. They just put a bunch of new firefighters on. Uh, the <clears throat> most of the firefighters were young firefighters were were in the service for World War II. Well, this is my father was running the drill school. They had about 14 or 15 guys that, that, that were going through the drill school. I can remember going to school and at lunchtime we, I went to St. John's School. We'd stop by and, and watch them throw the ladders and everything. And my father would say, get to school. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about um, just uh, the amount of folks, the amount of firefighters that were employed back then, maybe compared to numbers now. I think we're, uh, we're around 156 at that time. Now we're a 
last time I heard it was over 200. <coughs> well, certainly the city has grown in yeah. size. Let's move on to the next photo. The 1932 uh, Miracle of France uh, city service ladder truck. Now they took this truck in, in the shop and, and rebuilt it all. And uh, it stayed in service after they rebuilt it for uh, seven years. And then it, the motor let go on it. So they bought a brand new junior aerial from Seagrave of Columbus, Ohio. John Menz, that's Lieutenant Salvucci, uh, Tony Ranella, Pat Sullivan, Ed Egan, Larry Hanrahan, and John Menz. And I see the posting of notices on the front of this house. Yeah. So what possibly could have been posted? Would it have been something related to the fire uh, service or yes. something totally different? Some. It was probably something to do with uh, events. They were very active, you know, in Hausnacht. The community was very active. Very, everybody knew everybody in Hausnacht. Well, and still, we should mention that even today, you know, firehouses are very much a part of the community that they're located in. That's right. It is, it is like a meeting place. As big as the city has gotten over the years, there's always that sense of community and neighborhood wherever these fire stations yep. are located. I mean, they, they fit into that well, you could mold. See, you can see they used to come to the station to play cards. And, right. You know, everybody, everybody, uh, uh, House Neck uh, and, and other communities and sections in Quincy are unique in that they are very tightly knitted. Everybody knows everybody. Oh, very young child. Here. Very young child. I, I think that was uh, one of the men's. It's, it's the 36 Maxim. It's hard to make out the firefighter that uh, might be driving this. Yeah, uh, the film is, looks like uh, Eddie Walters. Okay, we'll go with that. These trucks, these Maxims, these 36 Maxims, you could put them any place. You could put them in a driveway, you could get them up in the back of a house. You, you know, they, people. People loved them. guys on the job loved them because they could they could get in where, where, where today you, you wouldn't want to take one of the new trucks in where, where these trucks used to go. It looks relatively compact. Yeah. Well, they used to drive the sewer line with it when the kids would light the marsh. They'd they'd ride the sewer line to to take their booster line to go out and put out the uh, the uh, brush. Really. Um, I wouldn't want to take one of the new trucks on the sewer line today. The year for this photo? Uh, it's, uh, I would say it's right around 1946 or so. That's where most of these pictures came from. And you see the uh, the tires, they're, they're certainly a rugged, uh, yeah. rugged tire. So with that said, I'm sure it was able to maneuver yeah. into some, you know, ground that might not be, that might be of a challenge. Yeah. John Menz, he was a, he was a happy-go-lucky guy. I think it should be uh, mentioned that uh, most firefighters are. Yes, yes, they all tease each other. Let's you gotta, you gotta have a good sense of humor. We I have a shot of some gear. Yeah, they hung somebody. <laughs> this is a perfect opportunity to really take a look, at, as we had mentioned before, how the gear has changed over the oh, years. Oh yeah. We're placing this photo around what time? It's around 1946. And the safety has improved. Oh, definitely. And it's important because, of course, nowadays uh, there's the association with cancer and oh, having yeah. fought fires, having firefighters yeah. succumb to cancer who fought fires years ago because yep. the equipment wasn't, didn't protect them right. enough. The old service mask was never designed to be used in the fire service, and that was the main mask. And when you're responding to a fire, you have to respond to a fire no matter what is burning. Right. You, so never, you never give it a second thought. Right, right. It's mm -hmm. always to save a life. Yeah. Okay, this, I, this looks familiar, but I just yeah. want you to, I, I want to see if I'm right. So you tell me where this is. Oh, the bargain center. That's correct. Okay, talk about this. And this of course, people, this is downtown Quincy. This is downtown Quincy. It happened in 1953 in in uh, March, 
My father was on the license board, and they just pulled up in front of City Hall. It was a Tuesday. That's and his driver says to him, "Hey, chief, look across the street. The building's on fire." Sure enough, they they had a, a good fire in in this. It went to it went to three alarms, and uh, they 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 stopped the fire. In, in this building here was Joe Beston's. Uh, Gym, which a lot of people went to to get in shape. To, a lot of them went to for police uh, physicals and fire physicals. And he ran a he ran quite a gym. And then on the first floor was was uh, was the original spot where the Waldorf was. And then Joe Nebo moved in there. And then on the second floor there was a bunch of other small shops. And then the bargain center took it all over. And, uh, so to look at that area now, uh, we have the Galleria that's now taking that spot. That that's that's, that's taking the, that spot. And now I notice that there are looking at the apparatus. We have white vehicles. We uh, yeah, have black vehicles. Uh, as 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 we were phasing in in the white vehicles, those two American La Frances came to the city during the World War uh, World War Two. Uh, the city paid for one, and the, and the federal government paid for the other one. There's the original s s special service truck, which later became Rescue One, and uh, that's Ladder One, and that's Ladder Two. And what were the heights that these ladders could extend back then? And this uh, Ladder One went to 100 feet, and, and Ladder Two went to 85. And the building was saved, correct? Yes. Yeah. In fact, the bargain center finally took it down. And, and you know, continue this store along. The uh, up over the bargain center was a bunch of small, you know, dentists, lawyers. Okay. A little bit of everything. And so the bargain center was only on the first level. Or maybe first level, and then they then then they extended out and uh, went down the street. They because that was a big attraction. The bargain center oh. was a big attraction. A lot of people wouldn't have been able to put their kids in nice clothes at Easter or Christmas. Or and people came from all over. They came from all over. Now, would you would you place this photo around the time that Quincy Center was known as Shoppers Town USA? It, it was at the height of the Shoppers Town USA. This was uh, Ladder Three, the Persh, that uh, was sold and, and it wound up in uh, I think it's. It says Duxbury. Yeah, Duxbury Fire bought it. They never had a ladder truck, so they bought when Quincy bought a new, brand new Maxim, 85 foot uh, aerial. Uh, they they bought the, this and became their ladder one. And this would be around what time? That's 1947. This is when it was brand new. Ah, so it started off not as a white truck. No, these were the with a gang of firefighters that were put on in 1942. Uh, we see Mayor McIntyre at the front. Uh, yes, Jimmy McIntyre and, uh, and Chief Barry. We get down the line, it's Captain Daly, Captain Jolly, Ralph Givens, Charlie Anderson, Frazier, Nick Cannon, Captain Shea, Arthur Salvucci, Captain Carreri, Eddie Gallagher, Butch Hunt, Bill Todd, Captain Lyons, John Mullen. Up above was the Melvesti, Nick Melvesti, Joe LeBlanc, Captain Monkley, George Mallet, Eddie Walters, Paul Jacobs. Oh, there's some Paul. welding going on here. Yeah. yeah. I worked with all these guys here. That's George Taylor, uh, the first, first fellow. The fellow with the saw is uh, Donnie Sturgis, Leo Bongiano, Billy Burr, Jack Ganzel, Lester oh. Haslett. And what would they be doing here? They were testing out a new saw. This was a, a new cutoff saw. Captain Craig, Bobby Bennett, and Joe LaPointe. So what um, would this be if they had to get into a vehicle? Or? Yeah, cut a fence, cut a, cut a lock, cut a... It was it, it was an it was one of the early uh, it was a converted uh, chainsaw 
It, it worked all right, but it, it really didn't have the, the muscle that it, that, it, that it needed. But it was better than nothing. I was going to say it probably came from having nothing to, to having yeah. something that I mean, would do some, some job. At yeah. least, uh, you had to be careful when you're using it around any spills or anything because of the sparks. Oh, okay. It could, it could ignite and create its own fire. Right. This is, this is the Rescue One. <coughs> In this time period, this here was, uh, I would say, it was around 1972, 73. And you can actually see the gear in the corner, yeah. and that's, I would say, it seems to be an upgrade from some of the earlier oh, yeah. gear that we've oh, definitely. looked at. Oh, definitely. That's ladder two. That was bought in 1948 and got delivered to the city in 1949. Do you remember its service record or how many years it was in service? It was in Sirius about 14 years, and they had an accident. They were going to a fire down Beach, Beach Street in uh, Wallaston, and uh, Engine 2 was coming up Billings Road. Didn't hear them coming, and they hit them at the rear wheels. And that was the end of the, end of the truck. That was around 1973. How was the... Um just talk about the steering on this type of vehicle. Maybe back as far as the control of the steering. You'd turn it the opposite way if you wanted to, if you wanted to make a, a turn. A good tiller man and a good, and a good driver could put that truck any place. Well, the, exact, that's what I'm getting at. Talk about the, because uh, you the said maneuver, the tow man maneuver, and the uh, driver. The new maneuverability is, is unbelievable with them. You can put them any place. You know, you can come down that street, and just make a the front piece, make a and they and they steer the truck the the opposite way, and it slide the uh, the trailer right out. So it was certainly a combined effort. Oh yeah, the driver and the and the tiller man had to work together. If they didn't, they were in trouble. And they had to work fast. Yes. Now this this was a V12. It was a 300 horsepower engine in it. It really, really was the, the kickoff to, to really modernizing the fire service. And that truck cost $35,000 when it was bought by the city. So uh, we're saying $35,000 in? In 1949. Okay. Today they just bought one that's over a million dollars. <laughs> so you can see, but you got so much more equipment, so much better Automatic transmissions, power steering, right? Power, you know, air brakes. Tom, I want to thank you for uh, joining me. Certainly, to go through some of these early photographs yeah. of the Quincy Fire Department. Do you have any closing thoughts? Well, I'd just like to thank Don Morey for the pictures of the House Next Station. Uh, he he gave those to me. You know, talk about the importance of archiving uh, the history of the Quincy Fire Department. And certainly anyone interested in history would, would enjoy seeing this, but it really shows folks how they got to today when you reflect back in the history of anything, in this case, the history of the Quincy Fire Department. Yeah. Well, as, you, as you've seen, you know, the evolution of the, of the fire station down to Howes Neck being built the, the groups of men, the equipment, how the equipment had changed from riding on the op open, they used to call them open buckets, you know, you, and you ride on the back step and you, in a snowstorm or rainstorm. It, uh, it, it, it has come a long way and, it's, uh, and it'll even come further. Uh, but basically, you put put most fires out with water, but it's a team effort. And that's, that's why you see the, the kidding around in, in these pictures here, some of the Tin Man and stuff like that. Every, everybody has, a, uh, has, has to have a good sense of humor because of things that you see. Because the work is serious. This work is serious and it, it kind of relieves the tension. And uh, fire, the firefighters are good cooks. 
they're good tradesmen. They do a lot around around the station. You know, it's all teamwork. Well, once again, I want to thank you, Tom, for joining me. This has been a look back. I'm Mark Crosby. I was joined by retired Fire Chief Thomas Gorman. I want to thank you for watching this episode of A Look Back. <laughs>